Vroom, vroom. <laughs> right. This is a Sebring Sprite. I bought it seven years ago on eBay. And I paid a lot of money for it. But the reason I paid a lot of money, I really fancied a frog eye. And I thought, I know what's going to happen. You buy a frog eye and you rebuild it. So if you're going to do all that work, you might as well try and do it on something that's a bit better than normal. So I thought a Sebring would be the answer. I didn't know anything about Sebrings, but it was advertised as Sebring good enough. I didn't think it raced at Sebring. Apparently, if you ordered one of these new with disc brakes, big rear brake drums, the proper master cylinder and the, all the bits, which is what this man did, it is a Sebring, or it could be considered to be a Sebring. In fact, if you look it up on the Sebring list, it's on there. And what happened was, this is the page from the Sebring wet thing, and the car was bought new. Um, In Lancashire, wasn't it? By John Naylor. And luckily, the man who, uh, who sold the car to me looked into its history, and he got on to John Naylor, and he got uh, various receipts for everything, including letters from Speedwell, um, and, and he had a supercharged engine, and he did a bit of rallying with it. He did, he did, he did, he had a bit of fun with it. But it was his everyday car, and I think his dad bought it for him. And in one of the rallies, he had a bit of an off, and he and he damaged the front. And I'll show you where he damaged it. But anyway, he said he didn't have a car for a week, and he made him realise that if you have to go to work every day and the thing, you know, it's not, not a good idea to go racing with it. And I think his dad probably told him he couldn't do it anyway, but that's another story. Well, unfortunately, Mr. Lainer is no longer with us because he died in 1919, 2009. Yeah, I think so, that's right. um, so anyway, so there's a lot of lovely stuff in here. You know, there's an original novel. There's a tax disc I just saw, which you'll never find again, of course. And um, but now this is this is where I'm going to come back to you, Doc. First of all. We put some pictures of it up on a on a quickie, you know, where it goes a short. A short for a minute or whatever it is. And straight away somebody wrote it and said, Oh no, that's not a Sebring. And the weekend when I was in Belgravia, I was with Alan, who worked at the competitions department, so he knows what a real Sebring is. And I said, Oh, I've got a Sebring Sprite. He says, It's got a roof and all that. I said, No. He said, Oh, it ain't a Sebring. So he's got a different idea what a Sebring is to what other people have got a different, but apparently in sprightly years, they considered if the car was new and it was all the, with all the bits, it's a Sebring. So that's how I'm calling this a Sebring. Plus the fact it's in the Sebring site, but it's got this rare front. That, what yeah. was the front, Susie? A star sprite, was it? Something like that. Anyway. Apparently, there was this firm up north who made the Yorkshire thing. Yorkshire. So, this man, that's where he was. So, obviously, when he had a front put on it, he had a front put on it from a local firm, which turns out they didn't make very many. And looking at it, I'm not very surprised because it's not very good. But obviously, I haven't had the knock on one thing or another. So, then. So, where's look, the knock? Where did it have the knock? Well, round here. Just lay it down. This hinges from there and goes up. And that's rare. It goes up. And that's rare. That and well, with fiberglass fronts, they normally hinge this way. But this one goes up, which is not very good, actually. But, you know, listen. So now we're looking at it and we're saying, well, what do we do? You know, we could just buy a Sebring front, which you can buy now for a few hundred quid. But it's had it on since 1961 or whatever. So really, it's original. So we've got sort of stick with it. The body shell, their replacements, we had to do that. We've done a lot of welding, but it was done a long time ago. But the last thing was the rear wings. And one of our followers noticed John walking around with a frog eye rear wing. So the two rear wings we did a couple of weeks ago. Because they were really wrong. This bit, that's, that wasn't that bad thing. 
God because obviously it gave something to fit, fit the wings to. So the body shell is more or less done. So I'm thinking of sending this off and having it dipped and then, and then having it, you know, that stuff to stop it rusting. Not that I don't think it's going to ever rust. And what about the doors? The doors, no, they're all right. We, we do them ourselves. One of them wants a little bit of repair, but you ought to do that. So, so that is, that's the body shell, and this is the front. So this really, this has been in the shed now for years, and we blasted all the dirt off it. And this today, this was the big decision. You know, let's get that front out, John, and make our mind up. So we get the front out, and then we get the history out, and we start reading the history, because don't forget, I haven't looked at that for seven years, and, and it's so connected to this front. No, I don't think we could do anything else but use the front. So what we're going to do, or what we're going to try to do, all that non-original, if you look at the front, you can see that it's had all them repairs done round there. Oh, the fiberglass, And that yeah. is the side where we had the bump, and that is about half an inch thick, so we can't use that. Then this is where it was mounted on the, on well, that, the thing, so yeah. that broke. And when the man, the man I bought it from, he bought it on eBay very cheaply because the man had died and his son couldn't open, open the bonnet. So he didn't really know what it was and the bloke who I bought it from was obviously a bit clever and he looked at it and saw the wheels and one thing and another and took a gamble. And what was special about the wheels? Well, it's got a lot more spokes than standard and because 60. it had wire wheels, because it's 61, they wouldn't have had wire wheels, you see. So to add them good wire wheels, there's a good chance it could have been a Sebring, and he was right. So he bought it, and he was the man who got onto the original owner, got all the letters, got the various things. It was fitted with a speed pilot, held a speed pilot, and he had the badge, and anyway, got onto it, and got it all off of the original owner. Great, great. And what were you saying was special about the brakes? Well, it, again, it's got the proper Type 10 front calipers, which apparently are really rare. Um, so we we'll clean them up, we're going to use them, they're, they're going to need new pistons. And is that on the front? But yeah, but we've got all that organised. It's got um, Riley 1.5 rear brake drums, which are terrible, but we just bought a new pair of them on eBay, so hopefully they'll be alright. So, you know, so we're going to have a go at this. Now, when we sandblasted that off, it was absolutely filthy. And it's done quite a bit well. But in places, you can see where we blasted it, We've managed to blast, we've managed to blast the repairs, but they've actually got holes in. So I'm going to try, I'm going to get the blast out the first time it stops raining, and I'm just going to blast the repairs away, very carefully, until I get to that bit. And then we're going to take it all to pieces and we'll repair it all nicely. I'm not happy with all that. I think what we do, we make this a bit stiff around here. So we're gonna tweak it up a little bit to make it more usable. But I think we've just got to use that because it's part of the history of the car. So that's it, so we're gonna use that. Now the engine, the original engine, had a supercharger and it blew up and it went back to um, Speedwell and I've got a letter from Speedwell saying all about it, one thing or another, and they put another crank in it and balanced it and everything and then they blew it up again. And then the second owner was something to, had something to do with Fords, and they had an experimental engine. And they, Ford, they somehow had a Ford one, and they'd only made five of them or something. And it looks really good. I took the rocker cover off, and all the, all the rockers have all been machined, and I haven't taken it to bits yet, but I think we'll keep that engine. But it had a 45 Weber on it, and it was all cut away just here, which is one of the reasons we had to do that. So, I've been searching again for the last seven years, I've been keeping my eyes open, and I've managed to buy the original Charlotte supercharger with the original kit to be able to put it on a BMC A series. So, I'm reckoning there's a man not far from me, he advertises on eBay and he's got all the bits for them and he's had a lot of experience of them. I think he's got one on his little Morris Minor. 
which is another thing I want to talk to you about. So I reckon I can get all the good stuff for that so we can rebuild that. And then we've got this original, very clever engine that came from Ford's for the second owner. I think we'll take that bit and have a really good look at it because it could have the special crank that they had in the Formula Junior engine. It's certainly got the rockers look lovely, so it could have a Formula Junior head. So anyway, seeing as it's had it for donkey's years, I think it's had it since 1963, if I remember reading through the history. So I mean, that'd be worth keeping, really, if we can. So we'll take that to bits. Um, I won't put a rib gearbox in it, because I think that's all nonsense. I've never managed to break one that hasn't got ribs. So we'll have to put the proper gearbox back. We've obviously got the back axle. It was a whole car. In fact, the interior, the seats, although they're used, they're nice. I shan't replace them. I'll give them a nice clean, and if we can improve them a little bit. The other thing it's got, which would be fabulous to have, we have rubber carpets, these cars, and I've got one of the original carpets, but it's pretty desperate. And if you like to come with me, Susie, I'll show you the pretty desperate carpet. I mean, I can't refuse that offer. I don't know whether anybody in the world might have them or have had them redone or whatever. I've got a nice one for the tunnel, which I reckon I can repair. Inside the doors, it's got this rubber, and obviously, originally, I had it on the floor. So let's have a look at it. Yeah. You see that? It's the original carpet. I think that's the passenger side, probably. So, I mean, you know, no matter how clever you are, you ain't going to be able to put that back. But the ones in the doors and the one on the tunnel... Now, where's the one on the tunnel? Oh, I'll show you that. Look, it's down here. This is I becoming mean, like a shed tour, I think. It's a bit dark. Yeah, well, it is, isn't it? We'll have a few questions on all this lot, won't we? There's the one for the tunnel. I think we can we can safely say we can clean that up and do a bit of repairs and, and fit that. I mean, I've been looking after that for the last seven years. So we've got to do our best to use it. Right, so this is the brake system that you have on a Seabring Sprite. This is the pedal box, and you have a couple of separate cylinders there which we've managed to get. So then people say to me, oh, a Type 10 front calipers, they're impossible. Well, luckily, we've got them. And we've just taken them to bits and cleaned them up, and they're in very good condition. But, obviously, these are desperate. So yeah. I've gone to my man that I use on the brake things, who is a knockout, by the way. Is that power so track? Power track. Oh, yeah, we've got those in stock. Stainless steel, yeah, that's no problem. What about all the seals? Oh yeah, we got them. What about, you know, the... Yeah, we got all of them. So, I've just ordered all of that. So they're gonna be lovely. We shall blast these. Probably have them, might even have them cadmium plated or zinc plated or whatever, like I did on my Ferrari. Mainly it's stop them going rusty. That's all that is for. So that's that done. So now, we need the Riley 1.5 back brake drum that obviously had a wheel come off at some stage and that has skidded along the ground and put a flat on it, which is not terrible, but when you could just buy new ones. So we went on eBay and we bought two new ones and I think, you know, to be honest, the time we cleaned all them up and found the other one, which we can't actually find, I think two new ones. So we've got new ones left. So then... I say to my man at um, Power Track. Power Track. What about the rear? Oh yeah, he said we got them. We want the fitting kit? Want the th yeah, yeah. Want the mop? Yeah, all of it. So anyway, so we got new ones. I hope it all arrives. <laughs> yeah. Well, Wednesday. So that's the back plate, which is apparently difficult. I haven't tried to buy one of that's them. That's the back plate for the. Yeah. Rear, rear yeah. drums. Well, we got one, we got them. If we give them a good old sandblast and a bit of a clean up, they're going to be fine. So that's the box. Got the discs. The discs are not beautiful, but I don't know whether you can even get them or what, what the score is for them. I suppose I should have a word with him. When a power track man, he might say, oh, yeah, no, we got them. Okay. I never thought of that. But to be honest, 
you can clean them up. That certainly was good enough to get us on the road, you know. So that's it. So you're pretty well up to date, but as we do this now, we'll make videos of it. Right, it's now tomorrow. So now, overnight. Tuesday. Yeah, I've been thinking about the car again. And, of course, for the first time in seven years, I started looking at sprightly years. And also reflecting on the man at uh, Belgravia, Alan, who worked in the competition department. So, I mean, he, he really knows what he's talking about. So when I said to him, I've got a Sebring Sprite, he said, oh, it's got the hard top and everything, have you? I said, no. Well, he said, it ain't a Sebring Sprite. So there you are. So now, one person says, if you ordered the car new with all the bits on it, it's a Sebring Sprite. The other bloke says, if it hasn't got a roof on, it's not a Sebring Sprite. Now, the front of that car is horrible. I mean, we're going to make it work if we have to, and it's going to be a load of work. And I hate the fact it lifts up like that and not like that, because to be honest, I don't think I'd even be able to lift it some blooming heavy. So I'm not mad about that front, but you've got to think about these things, you know. You can't go blading into them and, and you go rushing off and do it all, and then you're disappointed. So Motorbuild, who I know very well, make all the bits to make a proper Sebring Sprite. They make the roof, they make the front. I don't think I'd cut the back off, because obviously we've, it's all original, we've repaired that. Now, if in the future someone said, oh, that bloke, that terrible Ivan Dutton, he spoiled the car so much, I'm going to buy it and take all that old rubbish off and make it back to original, they'd be able to do it, because the bonnet's down there and it's untouched. So, so you know, we ain't, you know, if this was a Type 35 Bugatti and we changed the body in 1924, 5, 6 or 7, and then now in 2000 and whatever it is now, was it? 2000? 2024. 24, I said, oh, I don't like that, I want to put, oh, but as it happens, all the original bodywork is there, so you could just put it back. So I don't know, obviously, when I kick the bucket or whenever, this stuff's all going to get sold. So, you know, my family will probably finish up with the money or whatever, I don't know. I'm hoping I can waste it before then, but anyway, hopefully. So if I was to make a genuine-looking Sebring Sprite on a genuine Sebring Sprite, what does that make? It makes a Sebring Sprite on a Sebring Sprite. It must be a Sebring Sprite. So I don't know what to do. But anyway, it's a thought, and I thought, I'd be interested to see what you reckon about it, because, you you know, there's got people saying, oh, you mustn't touch it. There's other people saying, oh, well, you know, if you think that's a good idea. But this all started, well, if I bought the car seven years ago, I'd say it started ten years ago, and I went to see a Seabrook Sprite with the hard top and everything. Lovely, beautiful little car, been completely rebuilt, and it was a hundred grand. So then I started, said to the bloke, well, let me have a look at the history. And he showed me the history. And what he had originally was not very much. I mean, the car had obviously been bashed to death and then it had been abandoned. It was just looked like a load of scrap. So I thought to myself, well, if that's a Sebring Sprite, I might as well go and make one. And then this turned up that was a Seabring Sprite, and I bought it because I thought, well, you know, I'll, make, I'll rebuild it, it'll be a lovely little car. But now I'm thinking, well, as everybody keeps telling me a Seabring Sprite's not a Seabring Sprite unless it looks like that, then why not make it look like that? Because they're making ordinary frog eyes look like that. So I could make a real one. You say, oh, is that a Sebring Sprite? Yes, you can look it up on the register. It's definitely a Sebring Sprite. And it'll actually look like a Sebring Sprite. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. <laughs>